Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is January 1st of 2017. It's going to be hard to remember, isn't it? To, to write 2017, of course, I don't remember the last time I've written a check. I do everything online. Uh, this isn't going to be one of my, I don't think, it's going to be, I'm putting this in the classification of uh, stories, story time or whatever. So this will be episode number three, but it's going to be a little bit different, I think, <clears throat> because uh, one of the sites that I, I'm signed up, I get emails, is this one here. And I really like reading, I spend a lot of time reading these things. Uh, questions are asked and, and people answer. And uh, I've been reading these for quite a few years. I don't think I've ever posted an answer to any of the questions. I may have, I don't remember doing it. But uh, I, I remember somebody asked, there, there, they, they're asked questions. Let me turn the game down here a little bit. Uh, I remember somebody asked, "What was it like to be a you know millionaire, really wealthy person, and to go into places? You know, did the wealthy person pay? Does he have? Do you have a a gold credit card and that type of stuff? That was. Uh, but there's just a whole bunch of questions like that that that. You, and you get some really good answers. Like in that one, there were several people who answered and each one of them had been like the servant or the assistant or the aide or something. So somebody who was really, it took care of things like, so all kinds of questions. So, and I was looking at it this morning and this question Okay, I was just, I just had it here on the screen. I think I scrolled by it. This question comes up quite often, maybe in a different, uh, a different form, but I've seen it a whole bunch of times. There's an awful lot of questions about police and uh, military, also a lot of questions, I've seen questions about military, which I was never in the military, and that I find interesting, you know, about uh, SEAL team or, uh, are the military allowed to do this or that or other, you know, so. But this is one that I, I was looking at these and this is, the question is, if you're, if you're a cop, how is it viewed if you are pulled over by another cop? And I thought that would be interesting for me to answer from my perspective. Uh, I was a hospital security officer for 30 years in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, before that, I worked contract security. I even had my own patrol service for a year before I started working hospital security, a company that I, my wife and I set up. That was before security became a big thing. I knew then that, hey, security is going to be, and this is a field to get into. But uh, now during that 30 years that I worked hospital security, I, uh, for quite a few of those years, I was a reserve officer with a small police department, Raymore Police Department. And during that, during the period there of 11 years, when I was working at a, a small hospital, security at a small hospital, I had a full Cass County Sheriff's Commission. And uh, that commission, even reserve deputy sheriffs or people who uh, the horse patrol or whatever, even they didn't have full county commissions. They had a commission that, I don't, I don't know exactly what it said, but you know, when called to duty by the sheriff, whatever, the commission that I had and the other officer who worked with me at that small hospital, we had full commissions, uh, which was un unusual. It was really nice of the sheriff to do that for us. 
so that's the perspective I'm working from, and I'll I'll get into some of that. Uh, what I want to mention too is, and I left Missouri in, in 2000, and this is 2017. I don't know what the law in Missouri is regarding security officers since when I left. After that, I don't know. Maybe they've changed the law. So you'll see why that's going to be. Well, let me, let me get into that now. Uh, in most states, there are state laws that govern private security officers, and they're licensed through the states generally. Uh, the state handles it. And, uh, it, you know, it varies a little bit as to what, what authority you have, what type of a commission you have. Uh, I worked in, after 2000, I worked uh, in Florida, in Orlando. I worked as a contract security officer for a little bit. And then I worked in uh, Miami later as a uh, mall security officer. Then in Florida, a private security officer cannot even make a citizen's arrest. Uh, that's from our common law in the United States, which we get from, you know, the UK or whatever. Uh, a citizen's arrest is part of that. If, and I don't want to mention, well, I'll mention some states, but they don't, I don't know what the law is in that state, but let's say, well, let's take Missouri. You know, in Missouri, a citizen can make a citizen's arrest. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe, I don't know if I'll get into that here or not. But I would not recommend it. But uh, in Florida, a lot of courts in Florida, you can make a citizen's arrest, but not if you are a security officer. Uh, they have, in the laws or whatever, said you can't arrest somebody. You cannot make a citizen's arrest. That's in, but of course, private security people all the time take somebody into custody and hold them until the police get there. And that's, you know, if you detain someone, that's an arrest in that scenario. Uh, back to Missouri. Uh, because of corruption in the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, I'm not sure if, if it's in back in the 20s or back in the 30s. I think it might have been back in the 20s. Uh, because of that, uh, the state legislature or whatever, I'm not sure about St. Louis, but the state legislature or whatever took the, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department was corrupt or controlled by a Pendergast, a city boss in Kansas City, Missouri, and what have you. Uh, so the state of Missouri took over the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department and to run it. Uh, and when I left in 2000, it was still that way, although for a long, long time, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, I mean, you know, they long, long time ago, they cleaned up and there wasn't a problem, but the state maintained control and it was maintained by a board of police commissioners. And I'm sure probably in the beginning, I don't know the history of the board of police commissioners, but probably in the beginning, you know, it was three or five people, I'm guessing, and they probably were all, you know, appointed by the governor or the head of the highway patrol or something like that. My guess is that over the time, it became where the governor maybe appointed one person on the board and the rest were all uh, locally picked 
people in the Kansas City, you know, Kansas City, Missouri residents. Because of that situation, the state of Missouri uh, never passed a state regulation making security officers licensed through the state the way it's happened, I think, in most all of the other states. Uh, and because of that, the Kansas City, Missouri Board of Police Commissioners, you know, controlled by the state, and not really controlled, I don't think controlled anymore, but in that position, they set up a private officer's commissioning unit to take care of licensing of security officers, uh, private detectives, that type of that type of thing. And when they set that up, the way everything, the way it was set up and operated until I left in 2000, uh, private security officers, my watchmen. In fact, for a while they had maybe they still they had they had commissions. They had private watchmen and private officer. And the company that was hiring or whatever could decide if they wanted their uh, security guard card to say private watchman or to say private officer. And then there was private detective you could get licensed there. But because of the way, it, and it didn't matter between it at that point, and I don't think it still does between private detective and, or between private watchman and private officer. Uh, because of the way the thing was set up, security officers had full police power on the property and including hot pursuit. So basically they had, they had the same police powers as a police officer. Uh, so now that we've got that, we're in other states and other areas you would be licensed maybe by the city or or by the well or by the state and you'd have the commission and it would be spelled out and uh, probably most of the time it would be that you would have you'd be authorized to be armed you'd be authorized to be in a uniform and have a badge and all this type of stuff but you would not be authorized to make an arrest. It would, if you made an arrest, it would be a citizen's, you know, arrest. But this is, I mean, all the time security people make arrest, so it's kind of a legal limbo or whatever. But in Kansas City, Missouri, because of this way things were set up, uh, so. Uh, we're talking about police officers pulling over other cops or whatever. Um, in Kansas City, Missouri, you would, if a, when a police officer pull, rent, when a police officer runs somebody's tag on the vehicle, if if that person is a police officer, it comes back. Uh, I can remember years ago, I think, if I remember correctly, if the person was a civilian employee of the police department, I forget the address, 9th and, I can't remember what it was, I used to know because I, I used to hear that when the dispatch, police officer would call in a tag on a car, um, dispatcher would come back, so say that person was a dispatcher or uh, the janitor at the police department or uh, a mechanic who worked on the cars <clears throat> at the police department or whatever, the dispatcher would come back and say, let's say it's, ninth, uh, let's say it's 1400 Minnesota, uh, which it isn't, but uh, the dispatcher would come back and say, uh, no wants or warrants, uh, that person's an employee at uh, 1400 Minnesota. Uh, now, if it's a police officer, would they, the dispatcher would come back and say, you know, uh, that's a Kansas City, Missouri police, you know, police, you know, police, something to that effect. I forget exactly how they would word it. But 
the few times that I was stopped or other people were security officers were stopped, they would come back, uh, you know, uh, you know, James J. Howard the third, uh, you know, date of birth. Uh, well, the officer would have given that information. No, we're running the tag. That's right. So I ran the tag. So I'd come back. The officer, you know, the dispatcher would come back, you know, name and date of birth and uh, would say, uh, uh, private, a private security, I would say security, a private security officer, a uh, licensed private security officer qualified to carry firearms. Or if you weren't, I was always qualified for 30 plus years. If you weren't, it would come back, they would say, not qualified to carry firearms. So in the Kansas City, Missouri, plate, of course, it would be other, if you were, you'd be out of Kansas City, Missouri, and that, that information, could, you could get stopped by Overland Park, Kansas, or whatever, and it would come back to, you know, private officer commissioned, uh, qualified to carry firearms, or, you know, so when the, or whatever it is, so the police officer, when he comes up, he knows that you are, you know, uh, a security guard. Now, if he comes up and it, it came back that you are not qualified to carry a firearm and you have a firearm on you, uh, you're in deep shit. One, you may get arrested. Uh, two, you may uh, have your police private officer's commission revoked by the Board of Police Commission or whatever. That could happen. Well, I know, I, I, I heard on the radio, and then I told a guy I was working with, hey, your brother was just stopped. His brother was a, uh, he got arrested. His brother was a uh, security guard for a company, and he was not working. And I think he might have been in uniform. I mean, uh, he was out running around with, it, with a gun, and he thought that, because he was a security guard someplace and because he was qualified to carry and he, I think yeah, he was qualified to carry a firearm but what he was doing was out running around acting like a cop or doing you know something so uh, so they're going to know who you are and in my case when I, when I got stopped they would know that I was a security officer and I can't remember now if it would come back and, and tell I, what company you work for or not. But uh, they would know that I was a private security officer, whether I was qualified to be armed or not. And of course, I wasn't running around. Well, of course, uh, I got stopped. So, okay, I got stopped. One time I was, it was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And I was in uniform. I was in the city of Belton, Missouri, just by a few, by half a mile. And I was going over to Raymore PD to do my eight hours of reserve duty. Uh, and I was going, you know, a little bit over the speed limit. There was no traffic out and uh, whatever. And I was going over the speed limit. And I had uh, my radio, and as soon as the officer turned the lights on, you know, stopped me, I uh, turned my radio down, turned the radio down that was scanning. And the officer came up, and the officer knew me uh, because I worked hospital security in Belton, at, at a hospital there in Belton, a small hospital. So he knew me. And he, I forget, you know, Jim, we're going a little bit fast, aren't we? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. And uh, he said, well, just hold it down. And I said, I will. And then he starts back to his car, and I turn the radio up, not so he could hear it, but so I could hear it. And then I heard him say, uh, I'm back in service. Another one of those Raymore police officers. And so then I went in and went to, you know, went to work. Um, I'm not sure if he would, well, later on, uh, you know, years later or whatever, 
I got off work at Research Belton Hospital at 6 a.m. in the morning, and I went home and got out of my uniform and locked my gun up, and then I had to run over at, right away and pick up Hillary and take her from her job to where she was living, which was just a short distance away or whatever. So we're talking, you know, 6.15, 6.30 in the morning or whatever. And it was like a Sunday morning or something like that. And I, have, I hadn't had a ticket in years. And so I dropped her off and then I was heading home, side taking a side street, which was just a very short distance away to where I lived and on a side street and the light and I was going over the speed limit. Did not have my seatbelt on by the way also. Turns the lights on. Uh, I, I didn't have my I didn't have the radio on, but I had it it wasn't this radio, but one like this laying on laying on the seat, but it wasn't turned on. Uh, now also I was an amateur radio operator, so licensed by the federal government, authorized to uh, laws regarding state and local laws saying that you cannot have a radio that can tune in the police department, you know, or not legal in your vehicle, you know, in your vehicle. Uh, those laws do not apply to amateur radio operators because we're licensed by the federal government. It's, I think, the case they eventually had to take. Now, uh, the, the problem is you're going to have some police officers who, and they, a lot of the laws used to be written. Those laws were in there from back from the times of, you know, uh, gangsters, you know, with the. Uh, submachine guns and from a long time ago when uh, and the laws just said you know no one is allowed to have unless you have a permit from the sheriff or whatever a radio that can you know but I think a lot of the laws after have, have been updated to state you know no one you know a can have unless have a permit from the sheriff or the fire chief or whatever now, this law does not apply to you know amateur radio operators but some of the laws probably haven't been updated so you may run into a well you may run into an officer who doesn't know or you know he just knows there's a law you're not supposed to but he doesn't hadn't read it to see that it says does so but anyway so he stops me uh, the police officer stops me I I put my seatbelt I click my seatbelt on him and he comes up and he says, uh, you're doing uh, 30. I wasn't able to understand the question I heard. So, um, echo, volume zero. I've never done volume zero before. I don't know if that volume one to 10, I could, I'm not sure if volume zero actually shuts it down for a little bit. Um, so anyway, the officer comes up to the vehicle and he says, I, you're going a little bit fast. You were doing uh, 36 in a 25 zone. And uh, I said, oh, I'm sorry. And he said, uh, did you have your seatbelt on? I said, yes, officer. I did. I lied, you know. And uh, so and he says, does that radio pick up police, click up police calls or whatever. I said, uh, no, it doesn't. It did. I had their frequency in there and the Raymore Police Department frequency in there. I sometimes use my own radio instead of a department. And also at the hospital in Belton, I was authorized and we had uh, the walkie talk we used there was on the police frequency. We were authorized to to use, but I just said no, rather than go into, I could have said, you know, yes, it does. But it, oh, anyway, he said, uh, right in the beginning, he said, uh, kind of early to be going, so, and, you know, and that was an opening. I could have said, uh, 
you know, I just got off work at Research Belton Hospital. Or I could have said, I just got off work. And then he would have said, where do you work? And I would have said, Research Belton Hospital, security. And then I'm sure I wouldn't have gotten a ticket. But I didn't do that. And he, every opening, I could have, I could, and I, because I thought if he's going to, you know, if he's going to give me a ticket, yeah, I was speeding. I, I just didn't want a ticket also for, you know, seat belt. Kind of rude also, to, you know. To, so I was prepared for the ticket. And uh, so he, uh, he wrote me a ticket, and when I went into work that night to research Felton Hospital, when the police popped in to visit or whatever, uh, one of the police officers said, why didn't you, I see you got a ticket, why didn't you tell officers, he's new, he's, he's new on the department, why didn't you tell him you worked here, he wouldn't have given you a, you know, a ticket, and I said, uh, I deserved it, I was, you know, I was speeding, I deserved it. Then when I had to pay the ticket, I hadn't paid a ticket in a long time. That was a lot of, quite a bit of money. Now, after that, after I got that ticket, I uh, had to go to training. Other officers did, not just me, but had to go to training at, it was held at Trinity Lutheran Hospital for security departments from several different, we all went, all went there. A hospital that I was uh, fired from, uh, but I had also we had taken over Health Midwest had taken over that hospital and some others, and so actually, and I'd actually been sent back there and worked a few days at a hospital that I was fired at because we now owned, you know, and in fact. Uh, when we took it over, the director of security where I worked asked me about the director of security at Trinity Lutheran Hospital about him who fired me uh, and who I could have bad, it'd be a good opportunity to badmouth the guy or say he's no, you know, and I didn't do, you know, I didn't do that or whatever. Um, so, small world, right? Anyway, so I, was, I, I went there for the training. I left the training at the end of it, not in uniform, of course, because this was, I uh, went there for training. And coming down to sail through Kansas City, Missouri, the speed limit I would guess is 25. To sail is a boulevard wide, you know, two lanes each direction or whatever. Uh, and I was speeding. I'm guessing it's a 25 zone and I was doing 35, I'm guessing, or maybe a mile or two over. And there was no police car pulled up behind me. Ahead of me was a, I'm not sure if he's on a motorcycle or whatever, but there was a pointing to a bunch of us. I mean, because that's a busy street. <laughs> and we turned down the, the, uh, the side street, to, you know, and you pull over along on the curb, along the curb there. So there was six, seven cars, I don't know how many uh, there. Um, so um, what I did is what I did, I never ever did a police officer stop me or did I ever say, oh, I'm a, a security officer, let me show you, you know, or I'm a Raymore police officer or I never, with that county, full county commission that I had for 11 years because I was working at this small hospital in Cass County. Uh, like I said, I had a full Cass County commission. I never ever showed that to anybody. I never, t the police officers from the city of Belton didn't know that I had, that I had a full didn't know that I had a commission, didn't know that it was a full commission. There was times that, uh, I remember a few times, there was a guy in a parking lot one time, I forget, he was drunk and I forget what the problem was. I went out there and he was mouthy and I forget exactly what the whole, what the scenario was then. But he was saying, which I thought was kind of strange, well, go ahead and call the Cass County Sheriff's Department. Go ahead, and I was as I was dealing with him. I thought, you know, 
Cass County Sheriff deputy is already fucking here, but I didn't say that, you know. And there was no reason to, you know, uh, I, I guess I, I don't remember calling, but I guess because they showed up, uh, the Belton PD showed up. And then I realized as soon as uh, they showed up, why he was saying, go ahead and call the sheriff's department or whatever. He didn't want the Belton PD because they had just had a run in with him and he had, I guess, told the, the Belton police, fuck you. You guys are a bunch of shit and crap and blah, 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 blah. And so when they showed up, they were okay. You know, you're going to jail. But in all that time, only once in 11 years did I ever mention to anybody working at Research Beltonhop that I had a Cass County Commission. And that was kind of questionable on my part. I mean, I, I don't know. a lady came in with a baby that was in really bad shape. And the ER doctor, the head ER doctor, happened to be working that night great doctor, I mean, an excellent doctor, great doctor in every way. And he said, Jim, can you, can you help me? He said, this lady needs, her baby needs to go to Children's Mercy Hospital by ambulance right now. And she wants to take the baby home and get her husband and then take the baby. She says she'll take the baby over or whatever and he says i've tried to explain to her no the baby needs to go you know and the nurses he said the nurses have gone in, or the nurse went in and has talked to her and she's insisting and this baby needs to go to the children's mercy hospital staff can you help and i said i'll see what i can do so i went in and you know you know ma'am uh we i said i'll we'll send the police to pick up you know pick up your husband and you know get him to children's mercy hospital or you know bring him here if it's a time to you know I, what i was doing you know whatever if, you know but the baby needs to go no no i'm going to just take the baby home and then my husband and i will will take the baby or whatever so finally i said well ma'am i'm a cass county deputy sheriff and what i'm going to have to do you're not leaving me any choice i'm going to have to take this child into custody uh, and uh, I forget exactly what I, exactly how I worded it or whatever and at, at the time I was doing it I was thinking god damn I hope this bluff well it wasn't a bluff because I would have followed through with it that's something I always you know I would have followed through but the Cass County would not have been happy and might have uh, <laughs> that was not my place, you know, is I had a full commission, but I don't think the sheriff's department wanted me to, or, you know, the county wanted me to, uh, but anyway, she said, oh, well, you, you guys, Cass County's already taken my other kids away from me. I don't want to lose, have this one taken away from me. I'll go ahead and, so I, that worked out, but that's the only, you know, the only time, but back to being stopped by the police. What I did, I guess, most all of the other times, I didn't do it the for that time when the officer gave me the, the ticket that morning. I'd been working 12 hour shift. I just wanted to go home and go to bed, you know. Uh, oh, but when I was coming home from this training, going down for sale in Kansas City, Missouri, they <laughs> flagged us all down there. I'd already had that ticket from Belton and had to pay that. So I wasn't anxious to get one. But I did the way I, and that was, I waited until the officer got up to the vehicle, you know, and everything, and then took my billfold out and then flipped. I didn't show it. I didn't hold a badge out the window or whatever. I just knew that as part of your training, you're observing the person's hands, you're observing everything, and you're looking to see if, if when a person's going through their thing, if there's tickets in there or bond release slips. I mean, you're just looking, you know, you're observant. And so I flipped by, you know, oh, 
you know. And he saw the commission, of course, it said police, and, you know. He said, are you a police officer? I said, yeah, but uh, Ray Moore, I'm a police department. He said, okay. He said, just sit, don't leave. He said, just sit here until these cars ahead of you, until each one of them, you know, until they get their ticket and, and leave. So I sat there, and then when the one ahead of me pulled out, then I just went ahead and drove on home. Um, I got stopped by the highway patrol twice. Uh, once, I couldn't get the highway patrol, or they're a lot different. Um, they're trained a lot different, and they, they know the rules and regulations of, of the traffic, the type of stuff they deal with, you know. Of course, the highway patrol out in where there's no police, jurisdiction or whatever they deal with whatever is murder or whatever it is you know but they really know their <laughs> thing they're sort of like marines uh, in a way uh, uh, by the book and whatever I got I could not get my I had the new tags and I had the new tag on the front or back I can't remember but I couldn't get the other tag it was rusted I couldn't get the other plate off yet, and so I had it in the back seat, and so I got stopped by the highway patrol, and uh, he knew, I don't think it came back as, uh, I think it came back as security, I believe, um, but anyway, he knew, but it didn't, it didn't seem, it didn't matter to him. And I explained the problem that it was rusted. I couldn't get it, and I, it's in the back seat. Well, I had my coat or jacket or something, and it was covering like the one letter. Uh, it was laying in the back seat, and uh, it was covering like one letter at the end of the the plate of the license tag. And he said, uh, "Uncover it for me." So I <laughs> moved it so he could see it, and he said, "Okay, well, you need to get that taken care of." And I said, "Well, I will. Thank you very much." Then I got stopped by the highway patrol, and that was kind of funny because I was oh, half a block from the, of course it wouldn't have mattered to the highway patrol, I was half a block from being in the city of Raymore, where I had a, a police commission. And I got, my tags were expired, I forget if it was because I hadn't had the car, because of the hours I worked. I hadn't had the car safety inspected, or I can't remember why, but I didn't have the new tag on it. And he stopped me. And I did the, uh, when he stopped me, I waited until he got out, then I took it out, and then I slowly flipped through. Not obvious, I mean, but I did, you know, slip, and he, of course, he spotted, and he said, uh, and I didn't have to tell him, I don't know, maybe he recognized, you know, I said, you're a Raymore officer? Because he didn't say, are you a belt? I was in belt, and, a few feet, he said, are you a Raymore officer? I said, uh, yes, I am. And he said, well, you should know better, shouldn't you? And I said, uh, yes, officer, I should. And he wrote me out a ticket for expired state pay. Uh, so I got, I think those are the only time, I, well, I got stopped a few other times for, oh, okay. Uh, I, When I became a reserve officer with Ray Moore PD, I did not have to go through the police academy. And so when the state of Missouri passed a law saying that you had to be, if you were a police officer, 120 hours, <laughs> that's all, 120 hours at, at that point. That was a few years ago. You had to have 120 hours. Uh, the opportunity came up with Ray Moore that if I wanted to, I didn't have to because I was grandfathered in, but that I could, uh, go to the police academy and it would be the 240 hour police academy. And I, I went, I went and did that. So why did I mention that? There was gotta be a reason. Oh, okay, yeah. So years later, I mean, I'm going to the police academy three nights a week, I think it was, until 240 hours were completed. And the police academy was in 
at that time, when I started the police academy, it was out in Independence, Missouri. Pretty neat place. It was at what used to be a convent and for Catholic nuns. And they had roads through there. They had different buildings. And so actually at the end, well, halfway through, it was a long drive for me to get there, especially after working all, I was working days to go there and then, you know, they get home and play with But halfway through, they switched uh, the police academy from there to the Metropolitan Community College, uh, Penn Valley, which was a few blocks from where I worked at the hospital, Trinity Lutheran Hospital. You could see it from where I worked. So that was neat. I just needed to stay around when I got off the day shift, go and have something to eat there at the hospital and wait a little bit, and then I could just go over to the uh, college. And we were the first class that got college credit for, for that. But at the end of our, or towards the end, at the end of our uh, police academy, for the situational training, we went back and use the uh, place in independence because we could do some car chases on private property or not. We weren't, you know, we could do situational thing where you stop cars and stuff like that. We had roads in there that weren't city roads, you know. Uh, but anyway, so at the police academy, uh, you wore black pants and a white shirt. And so anyway, went to class, I left class, I was late, I was tired, and I have my books there. And I pull out to leave, and which, like I said, you could see, I was just a very few blocks from where I worked from Trinity Lutheran Hospital. And I pull out and there's no left turn. And I thought, oh man, I just wanna get home. It's late, there's no car, and I made a left turn. So, okay, the officer walks up and I know he knew because we were all getting off and he knew the police, you know, we were, and I'm in black pants and white shirt and had police administration and patrol techniques and all these books over here or whatever. And he said, no left turn there. And I said, oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't see the sign. And he said, well, you know, Mr. Howard, you work security over at Trinity Lutheran Hospital, you should know this this area. And probably he had, I'd probably seen him over there. I didn't, you know, recognize him or whatever. So, you know, I didn't get a ticket. I'm not sure if he'd given me a ticket if I'd have been a, you know, if I hadn't been in the police academy or not. I think those are the times that I was stopped. Now, let me talk about the times that I stopped somebody. <clears throat> well, in, in the 10 years or so that I was a reserve officer with the Raymore Police Department, and there's times that I was offered a full-time job, but I couldn't afford, you know, a whole bunch of times with them. I couldn't afford it. They didn't pay enough money at that time. Uh, But in the, all the years that I worked for them, and oh, they, there's times that, what the reserve did is we patrolled one night a week, the same night every week. But occasionally they would ask one of us to like to work. Well, when we started out, there were no police officers other than the reserve officers. That's all there were. They didn't have any full-time officers. And so it started out eventually, they got a dispatcher and eventually they got one full-time officer and they got another full-time, you know. The, the city and the chief of police and everybody was really nice. They did not want us to call ourselves reserve officers, especially the chief of, when they finally hired a chief of police, that's the first person they hired. When they finally hired a chief of police, and I think he was really nice, Lee Coleman. Uh, or was that the director of security at St. Joe Hospital, also next? I, no, Lee Coleman, I think. Really nice guy. 
uh, ex Kansas City, Missouri police sergeant retired. I think the reason that he didn't want us called to say we were reserve officers and he didn't call us reserve officers and the, the city when they gave at Christmas time a turkey to all their employees gave one to each one of us to uh, everybody was really nice. Uh, I think the reason he didn't was because he joined the uh, Missouri Chief of Police Association and I'm sure that on their listing or whatever they listed you know Kansas City Missouri Chief of Police Kansas City can or that wouldn't be Kansas uh, St. Louis Chief of Police Raytown Chief of Police you know and they probably listed the number of employees or something you know and so he wanted to he didn't want to be one you know or zero you know for whatever so he wanted to, to show seven which is what it was for a long time one for each night of the week but occasionally they would ask us when they started getting full-time officers then then if a full-time officer was not available then they'd ask one of us to work his shift and we would get paid but uh, so I it was just about impossible to get a ticket from me. Uh, I just didn't give tickets to people unless I really, you know, unless I really had to. Now there was a reserve officer who came later than I did on, and he was a uh, born again Christian, nice guy. Uh, he went to church, of course, twice a week. Sunday and then was it Thursday nights that they usually go or Wednesday night or something it's kind of they go two night you know two days a week or whatever and it's something I noticed about he was sort of the one that kind of clued me in on it uh, there's a spot I see it there on the camera that, oh, okay, that's, that looks like chocolate, but that, that would be dip. And we're just having dip. Uh, that's something I, I sort of, a born-again Christian, and he gave tickets to everybody. He gave tickets to everybody for anything. And I, I worked then later for, with a few people, and for a guy. And there's something about, they don't seem to be able to differentiate between, you know, city ordinances, county, county laws, state laws, federal laws, ho rules, you know, hospital rules or whatever, uh, and sin or whatever. It's, they really, you know, uh, something of a mindset or something you know do the right thing or, or do the wrong thing I don't know so it was really difficult to get a uh, ticket from me um, so uh, okay so working Raymore at night I would run radar occasionally I would do I was systematically unsystematic. You couldn't depend, you know, if somebody couldn't depend that I was going to be checking doors or if I was going to be running a, a bunch of, stopping a bunch of cars or if I was going to be, I didn't want it to be a pattern. Since I was the only officer, I felt like I'm the only officer and Raymore wasn't big, but it was it had a lot of land area. Uh, I didn't want to be predictable, you know. So, but when I ran radar, I didn't sit right up with a sign, you know, there was no, if I stopped you for speeding or whatever, you were, you know, there was no speed trap or whatever. But at first, I think when I started, I was uh, thinking, you know, man, here I am in this community and I'm all they've got all by myself. I don't have a backup. I can call for a backup and Belton PD would try to find me or the K-9 
Cass County Sheriff deputy would, if he was around to try to, or highway patrol, if he, if there was one, might, you know, whether I'm kind of on my own. But then I'd be running the radar, some car would be coming like, going like a bat out of hell. And then as he would pass me, he would kick on his light. It would be the Cass County Sheriff deputy. And he would just turn on his flashing lights and go on. A few times, uh, you know, they pull, like, pulled in and then I found out that for the entire county, and that was the way for, for years, they had one deputy for the entire county. So I didn't feel so bad that I was the only officer for this small little town in it. For economy reasons, they didn't. And then there for a while, at the last, uh, their budget was so small, Cass County, that they couldn't afford to put their cars on it. So the, the police, the sheriff's deputy sat at the station and if they got a call, then he drove because of gas, you know, you know whatever. So, but anyway, so the, um, now I was running radar early in the morning. I think it was early in the morning. It was, I think it was early in the morning. So I've been, uh, and a car comes speeding through and I turn the lights on and go and I'm still in the car, you know, he stops and he's holding a badge out the window, holding his badge out the window. And I'm a little bit pissed. So I walk up to the car and it's a Kansas City, Missouri police officer. And he lets me know, I'm a cat, you know, and he was going not to get, he's going pretty fast, well, you know, over. 10 miles an hour, you know, and he had an attitude, and I told him, I said, you know, you need to observe the speed limit, and if you, if you don't observe the speed limit, if I have any trouble with you, you know, exceeding the speed limit again, I'm going to be contacting your supervisor with the, with the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. Have a good day. Uh, I didn't give him a ticket. Now, uh, by the way, uh, some history. Back in the olden days, I guess the 30s again, or whatever, maybe the 20s, uh, when businesses were, when people were trying to form, when the Depression and the people were trying to form, actually before the Depression, I think, when people were trying to form labor unions and business owners would employ uh, people to guard their plants and to beat up men, women, and children who were outside protesting for a living wage and for uh, decent working conditions or whatever. <clears throat> Those business owners used uh, they even in, in some states, you know, the military, the U.S. military came in. I forget if it was Pennsylvania or where, actually came in and there was uh, some camps set up uh, by the uh, people trying to get a union that had their families there with them out in tents or whatever. And the army actually came in and bombed the, the, the people there, at the, you know. They used the, the military, they used the state guard, the National Guard a lot. The National Guard would come in and beat people. Uh, plants would just hire thugs or whatever, you know, with clubs and beat the workers who were on strike or whatever. Let's see. You know, look up the labor history sometime uh, of the United States. Uh, so this. I'm sure not, it, Missouri wasn't the only state, but Missouri passed the law. Two, what these companies would do is they would uh, hire thugs from out of the state to come in to guard their plant. They would also hire Pinkerton's uh, guard service or whatever and have those guards come in. Well, those guards that came in or the, just the thugs that they would hire they 
the company would, of course, have the local sheriff would be, or the uh, city chief of police would be, you know, uh, in the pocket of the plant owner, and the plant owner would say deputize these people, and these so these <clears throat> these thugs who came in, or the Pinkerton, who came in. Uh, would be deputized as police officers or sheriff's deputies or whatever. Uh, one time, uh, a bunch of Pinkerton people coming in to break up, you know, the uh, the strikers and whatever. A bunch of them were uh, killed by. Uh, the strikers and Pinkerton and um, maybe Burns to agency or whatever, they changed the rules which stayed in effect that, that Pinkerton would uh, no longer provide security for places that were on strike. Now, if, they, if Pinkerton already provided security for your factory and they were providing security there, and then there was a strike. Well, then they, they would continue to provide security. But if your place didn't have their security and there was a strike or whatever, uh, you couldn't call Pinkerton to, uh, to come in because they wouldn't do it. So anyway, the state of Missouri passed a law a long time ago that in order to be a commission police officer or a sheriff, deputy or whatever, you had to be a resident of Missouri and live in the state of Missouri in order to prevent these factories and places from hiring in people to come in and then deputizing them and then having them beating up, you know, citizens and protesters and strikers. So uh, in Kansas City, Missouri, I think the police department, their rule was that you had to live, I think, within the city limits of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, so there was a lot of police officers who didn't want to live in Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri police officers who lived in Raymore or out. And uh, so by me saying, you know, hey, I'd contact you because they were looking uh, internal affairs was checking on from time to time. When I was working at, at Trinity, somebody read the uh, read the rules, and the board of police commissioners uh, put out a ruling that this you know this applied the state law. It was, you know, back in, written in 1934, whenever it was written. Uh, and this applies to private security officers also. You have to live, you know, be a resident. And my director of security and the other directors of hospital security and then other directors of business, big corporations and, and whatever. You know, I like my director of security here at Trinity, Mr. Ross or whatever. I went by. Jim, oh, oh, the Board of Police Commissioners, they wrote, you know, whatever. And, oh, we're getting a lawyer. We're going we're gonna to fight it or whatever. And I said, you don't need a, of course, I knew, you know. I said, you don't need a uh, private officer's commission to be director of security. Well, uh, and he, of course, he wanted, you know, you know, he wanted probably to be armed. Uh I said, you don't need it. You've got 15 security officers here. You know, you can be director of security and not be, of course, of course, the board of police commissioners, when, you know, <laughs> every major corporation, Ford Motor Company, General Motors, Airlines, everybody, you know, all these people, because they didn't live in Kansas City, Missouri. They lived in Kansas, Overland Park, Kansas, kind of a wealthy, you know, kind of a wealthy community. And uh, of course, there's poor people, you know, but a wealthy community in Mission, Kansas, and they lived in 
all these directors of security would ever live there. So I, I had no sympathy for them. So uh, how did I get on that subject? So I think I covered, oh, okay. I, that guy, so that was why, if I'd have told, if I, uh, so, uh, who, uh, let's see. I never gave a, well, when I first started, in order to, to when I first started as a reserve officer on Raymore, I had to do ride-alongs with other officers and take some uh, courses and things like that. But the first night, the first time that I was on my own, you know, they cut me loose. Okay, you're now Class A or whatever it was, you know, officer, and the, the state gave a certificate or whatever. Uh, and so I was on my own, and, I, and that would be, I would be on my own. There wasn't, a, we didn't have at that point our own dispatcher. We used Cass County, uh, which didn't work out very well. And so, and I knew how people are, how the world is. So when I went in that night, I, I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to be judged. You know, there's other, the other reserve officers, a bunch of them have a scanner at home. They're listening. Uh, citizens in the town, or a lot of them had scanners. They were listening to the police and fire or whatever. And I thought, this is going to be an important, everything needs to go okay tonight. I, uh, so I went in and I did my, uh, and then I got a call uh, on Hubach Road, report of a car in the middle of the road. So I headed that direction. And I thought it was going to be outside. It was, you know, I, I knew it would be. I came to, I forget the road, which was right at the bottom of a hill, and that was the that was the city limits. And uh, but I went on to make sure. I went up the hill, came down the hill, or whatever. I'm outside the city limits, and there. And then I found an accident. Car had something had happened, stalled in the middle of the road, or something had been hit by another car at a high rate of speed. Uh, one, one young man, brothers, one young man was dead in the vehicle and his brother was badly injured. And uh, so I called for, you know, the fire department and ambulance crew and what have you. And, uh, oh, and then for a little bit, I'm thinking, my God, now I've been working hospital security and I'd written a lot of traffic accident reports, but never a fatality. That was, you know, and uh, never one that was going to be, this would be an important police you know, report to write and everything. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I can't even tell what kind of car that it, it is. It's, and this is going to be, and then I saw this guy who looked like he was 16, except he was in a Missouri Highway Patrol uniform, coming at me, and then I thought, oh, yes, this is, the Highway Patrol takes care of this. So, like I said, I patrolled, that was my first night, so the next week later, I patrolled, on, went on my night to, to work, and I thought, I knew right away, too, that I was not going to be an officer who would be giving, you know, lots of tickets or whatever. But I thought, okay, man, young man killed out there, I, you know, high rate of speed or whatever. So I went out to that area, except in the city limits of, you know, Raymore, but the same highway, J Highway. And I sat there running radar and Zoom. And I go and uh, I said, well, you know, you were doing such and such. And the reason I'm stopping you, it was, there was a fatality accident last week right over there. And uh, the guy said, yeah, I'm a, re I'm a uh, volunteer firefighter. I responded uh, because the fire department at that time was volunteer. Uh, that's another story. I actually was in training there. <laughs> I went through their training. Uh, 
And, and he said, well, I, I responded on that. And I said, then you should know better. And I gave him a ticket. Then I stopped another guy and I gave him a ticket. Then I stopped another guy for all these are for speeding and I gave him a ticket. So when I went in at the end of my shift or whatever, the dispatcher, who at that point was a volunteer uh, dispatcher, we had volunteer, we had reserve officer, we had reserve dispatchers. He said, uh, Jim, he says, did, did you know that the three tickets you gave tonight that uh, two of them were volunteer firefighters and one was the son of the postmaster? And I said, no, I didn't know that. I said, uh, I'm, I'm not sorry I gave him tickets, but I, did. I knew it on one. One guy told me, the other one didn't tell me. Uh, I know some other police officers that I, nothing, nothing as bad as that asshole that was holding his, waving and holding his badge out, you know, the window. And I never gave any of them a ticket. Now, that other reserve officer I told you about, the real nice guy who was born again Christian, but could ticket anybody. We didn't work this, you know, he worked one night, I worked one night. But I was working and he looked me up, he knew I was working that night. He came out in his car, he said, Jim, can we talk? And I said, sure. And he said, uh, well, last week when I was working, I was out, you know, late three o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning or whatever and a car came you know over a hundred miles an hour and I took off and then after it and then eventually it stopped and uh, he said it was and at that point I think we had two full-time officers and seven reserve officers you know we had full two full-time officers and he said uh, it was one of the full-time officers who was in his Ferrari, Ferrari or Jaguar, I forget what he had. That's another story. Remember I told you I couldn't go to work for him. They didn't pay any money. They still didn't pay any money. Uh, and he said he was laughing. He thought it was really, he thought it was really, you know, really funny. And he said, you know, of course he said I didn't give him, you know, I didn't give him a ticket. He said, you know, what should I have done? And I said, well, I wouldn't have given him a ticket either, but I would have told him, don't you ever pull that crap again. And I would have gone to the chief of police and I would have demanded that the chief of police take some kind of action, discipline it, do something. I would have insisted that he, that he do something about it. That, that's just uh, ridiculous to do that. Now saying that, that just, <laughs> brought to mind something. Uh, I had a girlfriend who worked, that's when I was working at Trinity, and uh, she was working medical records at midnight, and no, it wouldn't have been midnight because we, I, I worked day shift supervisor. She must have worked evening shift. No, at some point she was working midnight, because I remember we both got, uh, she was the person who, when I, when I worked midnights, I never worked, okay, I was working midnights at another, I can't remember. Because I remember though that I got off, I was, when I was dating her, I got off at like 6 a.m. in the morning. And she got off at 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning and she wanted to go shopping or do something. And I was, I was dying. I, my entire life, I, when I worked a midnight shift, I went home and immediately went to bed and then I slept, you know, eight hours or whatever and then woke up and then was up for a while and then went to work. And I was working a 12 hour shift in which you work, you know, working 12 hours, you go home and go to bed and wake up and go, go to work. But if I was working the eight hour shift, you know, and what she did is she went home and uh, stayed up all day until about the time I would be waking up and then she went to bed and then she slept right until time to go, you know, to go to work. So because I went with her one morning trying to do it. And I said, no, oh, I have to, I can't do this. I can't, you know, 
But, um, okay, so. Um, I took her. She lived in North Kansas City. I took her out to Raymore and uh, I said, let me show you her to my place. But then when we, I said, let me show you Raymore. The, the, uh, they, I said, they have these fantastic houses here. Let me show you a little bit of Raymore and everything. She said, oh, okay. So we drove around Raymore, pulled into Silver Lake and uh, very nice housing division. And they, when you pull in, they have, you know, two roads you know, going out, going in with a uh, lawn in between or whatever. And uh, so I pulled in and uh, she was driving. It was her car. If it had been my car, it was her car she was driving. So we pulled in and I said, just and then I saw the police officer, reserve officer I knew, sitting over there in the other thing. There was no trap at night. You couldn't, at Raymore, you couldn't find people to give tickets to. I mean, there was very few people coming through town. And, uh, so he's sitting there and I told her, I said, oh, let's have some fun. I said, floorboard it. Oh, no, I don't want, I said, put it out, put it down there. Peel out, let's go, you know, so. Uh, speed limit would be 25 maybe it was i know it was at least it was not more than 25 it might have been 15 or so i don't know it was we were in the housing division probably i don't know anyway she floorboards it and then of course this reserve officer he must have thought oh thank god something to do i got a real you know and he turns the lights on and whatever and pulls up you know and stops her and then he walks up to the car of course i'm in the passenger seat and he asked her for her driver's license. And oh, but when he starts walking up, I said, oh, shit, you're in trouble. She says, why? I said, I don't know him and he doesn't know me. Of course, that was a lie. And she starts shaking and everything, you know, and he, he walks up and he's saying, man, you know, ma'am, you were really uh, flying here and everything. And so <laughs> I wait a little bit. I mean, yeah, so I forget what I said, you know, so. And yeah, she's got a lead foot or something like that and started laughing. And then he's like, Jim, get the hell out of here. Go on, you know, so. But uh, so I, I think that's, but police officers, uh, expect professional courtesy uh, but they do, you know, occasionally they give a ticket to another officer or arrest another officer or um, but in general, I mean, that's, you know, I think that's whatever, you know, I don't know how I feel. I, I don't know how I feel about it. The officer holding the, the thing, you know, no, that's, you know, and I would, I don't think, I'm not sure, there might be some officer if, who, if you could say, hey, you're not supposed to, I, I never had that, would say, hey, you're not supposed to give me a ticket or, or uh, whatever. Um, but that, you know, that happens uh, one time that's before the World Wide Web, but I had a computer bulletin board. Well, that was, okay. I told you about that. That was the uh, the time that the, the Belton police officer stopped me. And then on the radio, he said, you know, he didn't know I had my radio on. Uh, and he said, oh, just another Raymar. I, that's when I had a computer bulletin board system before the World Wide Web. And I, sent that I was probably tired when I got home as a private message probably to Dick in Kansas City, Missouri. Well, I was in Kansas City, Missouri area, but I mean, uh, a longtime friend of mine. Uh, and uh, he worked for the Weather Bureau. But I, I think it was probably him. And I 
10 minutes ahead. I got stopped by the Dalton place I was uh, speeding, but he, of course, I, of course, he didn't give me a ticket, but I said he did, I did hear him say on the radio, oh, just another one of those ran more police officers or whatever. Well, <laughs> that message, uh, I guess I was tired. It went out on the general message board to everybody. And then I had some people saying, I knew it. I knew you guys didn't give tickets to each other. Because back at that time with my computer bulletin board system, the message boards, I were, there was no World Wide Web, but I pulled in user groups, message boards for, like Nick's interested in uh, trains. And so I pulled that one in. I'm not sure back then if that was when uh, the TV show was on, not airplanes, what was it, by the airport. It was kind of popular he was in, so I pulled that message group in for him. If I didn't do it then, I, I mean, I did it later. Uh, and I pulled in amateur radio groups and whatever, so that went, that went out to a lot of people. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Did I, I think I answered, I think I answered the question. Yeah, police officers do. Well, let me mention something else though. Um, because it popped in my mind, and I seem to remember telling the story, but I'm not sure if I told it uh, on a YouTube video or if I told it in my blog or if I told it to a family member or a friend or something that I was talking, I can't remember. So I'll tell the story, tell the story again. Uh, yeah, because this applies, I think. It does apply. I was um, working at Research Medical Center security. I was working the day shift and the day shift supervisor was and he doesn't like he's retired but was and still is an asshole. One of the few people of all my work career, one of the few people who was a fucking asshole and who I could stand and could not get along, who couldn't, I just couldn't get along. I didn't like the guy. Usually I can get along with everybody and I'm forgiving of, nobody's perfect, I wasn't perfect. Nobody's perfect, but this guy was a real prick. And uh, unfortunately for a while, I worked the day shift and he was the supervisor. Um, there was from time to time, you know, at a, if you're at a hospital, you get celebrities, you get all kinds of, you know, all kinds of people who show up, everybody work there long enough and, you know, babies are born, people die, people have accidents, people have heart attacks, you were there long enough. It, uh, it was interesting work. I enjoyed a, a lot of the years of it, but a few years I didn't enjoy. But so I was working at this hospital and Keep in mind that the day shift supervisor is a prick. I can't stand to even hear him or see him or whatever, but there was a lot of work to do and you switch post every two hours. And, uh, I didn't have to deal with the guy very much. But a uh, Kansas City, Missouri police officer, he started his career before he started with the he made the front pages of the paper in the local news thing before he actually went to work for the police department by working undercover drugs and making some really great arrests. Uh, let's call him Terry. Um, so he became a Kansas City, Missouri police officer. 
and then he eventually became a motorcycle patrol officer. And he was, he may still be working, I'm not sure. Uh, might still be working, maybe, maybe he's chief of police, I don't know. Um, and he was apparently a really good police officer. I saw him a few times. Uh, and he had an accident uh, on duty, you know, I forget, you know, and was injured, requiring him to be a hospital, go to the hospital and stay in the hospital for a while. So he was in a research medical center. And then I had uh, security officers that I worked with from time to time, they would say, oh, have you been up to see the police officer that was the motorcycle and I went, no. And uh, sometimes another officer would say, uh, you know, no, I haven't, I haven't been up to see him, which was the truth. We, they had, you know, they, these security officers, they would pop in on, you know, if you've been in the hospital, you know, and you, you, you want to be left alone in your room. I mean, you want the nurse to come in, you want the doctor to come in, you want them to bring you your food in. But when you're up there with a gown that doesn't fucking cover your ass, and maybe you've got, you know, maybe you're pissing into a urinal or, or whatever. I mean, you don't want people popping in on you. Maybe you do. Okay, I don't know. I, I, I don't, didn't, wouldn't want it. Wouldn't impose on people. Um, so then I'm making my rounds and I happen to be, I, we switched every two hours. So, okay, I switched, I was inside the hospital for that, for the two hours. And then I'm walking through, making the rounds through the hospital, go up to the front lobby of the hospital. And there is this asshole supervisor. Let's call him Charlie. And at the counter there is Terry, the police officer. So Charlie and Terry are talking at the information desk checkout area, I think. And I see Charlie and I decide to head the other fucking direction. Don't even want to be in the same, I, you know, I looked at everything in the lobby and everything is, and everything is okay. So I'm going to continue my rounds, some other, and then Charlie, Jim, come on, you know, no, I got, I got work, you know, I got work, Jim, I got work. So then he comes over, you know, uh, did you go up and see Terry when he was, I said, no, I didn't. I said, I, I, Charlie, I got, I needed to, try. no, I want you to meet him. You, you need to come over. You need to come over and meet him. And I said, I, I, let me, I got stuff I need to do. No, come on over. So I go over with Charlie. And Charlie says, Terry, this is Jim. He works, he works for me. Ah, which, ah, fuck, you know. Uh, it's true, I guess, you know. Uh, and... And he says, you know, uh, Terry, this is Jim Howard. And Terry says, oh, I know Jim. Uh, Jim's the reason I'm a police officer. I was 16 years old out in Raymore, Missouri, speeding, and he pulled me over. And I thought, oh, man, I'm going get to a, get a ticket. My dad's going to not let me drive. And he said, uh, Jim came up, he was so professional, and he he didn't give me a ticket, and I decided that I, I wanted to be a police officer. I said, yeah, Terry, nice to see you. And then I went about my, my duties or whatever. I told that story to years, just a few years ago, to a guy who worked at Research Medical Center, a security officer, and I told him that story, and he said, oh, what did Charlie say? How did, and I said, 
I don't think it fazed him. I just think it, you know, he's just so self-centered, egotistical, arrogant, and stupid. I just don't think it even, he didn't even know that he made an ass out of himself, you know. So, I think I answered the questions, right? Police officers do give professional courtesy. Uh, there's not a policy, you know, the same with family, you know. I, uh, if you deal with somebody, you walk in their shoes, it's the same. If police officers end up in the emergency room a lot of times, you know, bringing people in, uh, accidents to take reports, deaths, they have to sometimes make reports, all kind of, and you deal with the emergency room people. So a police officer might, uh, you know, cut some slack with, and maybe even without well, that reserve officer that I, that I uh, uh, was on the Raymore PD force with, uh, he wouldn't with church people, but maybe some people would with, uh, you know, maybe your fellow church people, if you know, hey, so-and-so's a really good, you know, he's a deacon with the church and whatever, sure, he was speeding, but I'm not going to, you know. So, I'm sure if you hate cops, which a lot of people do, then you're going to say, well, damn, I there be an oh, Whatever. <coughs> okay. Uh, I may do this again with some other, there was, uh, some of these questions are really interesting. What's the saddest thing you? Uh, what's the saddest thing you ever saw? Uh, what's the worst thing you ever saw? Whatever. That might be something for me to uh, to bring up. Thank you very much for watching. By the way, it took me eleven years, but I have two thousand subscribers now. Two thousand took eleven years. Can you believe that? Took eleven years to get. And I think the last time I looked now, we were up to 2,002 subscribers. I am not bragging because I think you know that because there's people that have, you know, get 50,000 or 100,000 or more subscribers. And it doesn't take them 11 years. Thank you very much for watching.